I want to go ahead and welcome everybody. Uh, this uh, virtual meeting is being held uh, for the old Nexhead Cove water main replacement project. And this is to serve as a pre-construction meeting um, to go ahead and, and reach out to local residents to give them some general information about this project. This is uh, a large scale uh, water main replacement project that also has some components for drainage improvements, as well as roadway resurfacing. This uh, project was identified as part of the capital improvement program. And so this um, was approved by our board of commissioners last year. Uh, we've been working over the good part of the past six months in acquiring survey data, planning and permitting uh, bidding, and now we are ready to move forward to construction. So um, the way that uh, we will go ahead and structure this is that we will just give a, a brief project overview. Uh, we'll go through the tentative construction schedule, project sequencing, uh, what residents can expect during construction, um, how we will communicate during the course of the project, and then at the very end, um, should you have any questions, we'll just dedicate that time to handling any questions that you may have. So the, the, the project is, is one of the larger scale water line projects that we have undertaken um, over the past uh, dozen years or so. Uh, the streets that are gonna be impacted by construction are, um, a small section of residents along West Danube Way, uh, residents along West Old Cove Road, South Cobia Way, West Finn Lane, South Pompano Court, West Sandpiper Terrace, South Sandpiper Court, South Roanoke Way, South Blue Marlin Way, Albacore Drive, South Pamlico Way, West Tarpon Drive, Amberjack Court, and Dolphin Court. Um, in total, it represents about two and a half miles worth of water main replacement. And I think it's about 331 properties that are gonna be impacted uh, by this project. So it's going to be uh, one of the more, um, one, one of the larger projects that we have undertaken um, here as of uh, recent. So first off, <clears throat> like to uh, talk about the tentative project schedule. Um, I think that is where most of the questions that we have fielded so far have, um, have come from. The, um, the notice to proceed uh, for this project construction, uh, that's going to be issued tomorrow to the contractor. Um, and just to back up a little bit, we had recently bid this project out and we had received three bids on the project. Uh, Envirotech Unlimited Construction Services, which is a local utility contractor, was awarded the low bid. And we had bid this out in three different ways. Uh, we had bid it out for uh, open cut uh, construction installation, as well as horizontal directional drill and pipe bursting. And so the contractors were given the ability to to go ahead and bid out uh, either one of those construction types. And then we had also broken it up into two separate windows, uh, being cognizant of the fact that we don't want to undertake construction during the peak summer season. So we had offered a spring construction window and a fall construction window. And so the, the low bid uh, that was submitted um, covered the open cut uh, installation method and was submitted for the spring of 2022 construction timeframe. So that is what we are moving forward with um, is to move forward with the, the spring uh, construction timeframe uh, for primarily open cut construction uh, installation type. So the way that we have structured the contract with the contractor is that they could start anytime after January 7th and they could work up until May 20th. At that point, we'll go ahead and put a hold on construction. And they, if they have not finished 
or substantially completed the project by that time, then they would have to demobilize and then remobilize um, in the mid-September timeframe where they could go ahead and commence uh, project construction. Now, with that, it would be conditioned on the fact that if they were to pull off in that May 20th timeframe, they would have to complete that section that they're working on and would have to go ahead and restore everything back to equal or better conditions from when they started construction uh, and have everything operational. So it would be left in a uh, somewhat completed state uh, for that active area of construction. Now, the total time frame that the contractor has uh, per the bid in the contract is an eight month construction window. Uh, this uh, contractor who is the low bidder uh, seems to be highly motivated and they would like to see if they could get it finished within that spring time frame. And so uh, for them, the incentive is to, to finish in the spring so they don't have to come back and start up again in the fall. Um, you know, th that delay um, could have a financial impact to them. So they are uh, motivated to, to get it done within that spring timeframe. Now, there's one thing that I, I do want to note is that May 20th uh, timeframe that we have to stop work, um, that is somewhat discretionary and that we will evaluate the construction progress at that time. So if they are in the range of 85 to 90 percent complete with a project, I don't think that we would hold them to that May 20th. We would let them go ahead and finish, noting that you know they could have an extra uh, two to four weeks in order to finish up um, and still um, minimize that impact with that uh, peak summer season. So um, even though we have that in the contract, we do have some some discretion with that and we will uh, evaluate that uh, as construction progresses. So I'm going to, to give an overview of uh, the project uh, for everybody who is not familiar with what is being proposed. What I have up on the screen is an aerial overview uh, of the uh, proposed work zone. And so up here at the top of the page, this is US Highway 158. Dave, South we're Carolina. not seeing an aerial overview, David. You're not? No, we're seeing a PowerPoint work screen with the tentative schedule. I think you got out of your PowerPoint. All right, give me a second. Okay, how about now? No, now, yeah, yeah now, yes. Okay, all right, fantastic. All right, so with this aerial overview uh, at the top of the screen, is is South Crowton Highway, US 158. You can see the hospital over here to your upper right. And if I scroll down, you can see the sound here at uh, the very bottom of the page. So where the project is going to begin is out here at the intersection of Old Cove Road and 158. And it will come down Old Cove Road and basically loop around and tie in over to West Danube Street. So that will be one connection that is made and that's gonna be made on the north side of the north side and the east side of Old Cove Road. And that the proposed water line is depicted here in red um, here that if you can follow the, the cursor or the hand, uh, that's where uh, the proposed alignment is. Then from there, from the intersection of Old Cove Road and Cobia Way, 
uh, along the east side of Cobia Way. It is proposed to run down the length of South Cobia Way around the curve down Sandpiper Terrace all the way to the intersection with Roanoke Way and then um, proceed out uh, the south end of Roanoke Way through the golf course and tie in over to Lynx Drive. A uh, portion of that goes through the golf course and we, the town has been in contact with the folks from the golf course and a portion of that will be bored underneath the golf course in order to minimize impacts. Um, along Roanoke Way, we're going to extend all the way to the cul-de-sac at the very north end. The water line is proposed to run along the very western extents of the right-of-way along Roanoke Way. And then the same with Blue Marlin Way is that the proposed water line is going to run on the opposite side of the street where the existing water line um, is currently located. And it's going to run from south to north and wrap around the cul-de-sac. It will then continue on along the north side of Albacore Drive, connect up to South Pamlico Way, and the water main is proposed to be located on the western uh, extents of the right-of-way along uh, Pamlico Way, and then along the southern extents of Tarpon Court and Amberjack and Dolphin Court. So, that is just a very broad overview. Um, it, I don't want to leave out the fact that we're also replacing Sandpiper Court over here off of Sandpiper Terrace, and then also Finn Lane and Pompano Court. And on Pompano Court, that would be located on the uh, west side of, of the street. And so in general, where the existing water main exists today, we are going to put in a new water main on the opposite side of the street. And how we will sequence it, that is that this will primarily be installed via open cut installation. And the once that water main is installed, that um, it will be pressure tested. It will be flushed, it will be chlorinated, it will be tested before it is put into operation. There will be uh, water services that will be tied in on the short side of the water main. And then also there will be bores going underneath the street for the, uh, for the water services on the other side of the street. And when that water main is getting ready to be put into service, the water meters will be switched out to their new locations so the connections can be uh, made and that system operational uh, when everything is put into place. Uh, a couple items of note about the uh, a change in method in some of the locations within the project area. Now, in, in review of some of the existing ground conditions, we identified uh, blocks of areas where there was some very mature vegetation uh, that currently exists, as well as some above ground improvements that if we, if we move forward with the open cut installation, could drastically change the landscape. So because we had received such a favorable bid, we had looked at ways in order to reduce impacts throughout the neighborhood. So we went back to the contractor and, and tried to identify some areas where we had some very dense or mature landscaping to see if we could minimize impacts by uh, being able to drill in those areas so that we could bore underground and reduce the impacts to some of those properties. So we've highlighted in green some of these areas 
uh, that we were able to identify and get some updated pricing in order to minimize um, impacts for these areas. So uh, we've identified an area along Sandpiper Terrace, and that's noted in green right here, which runs from just to the west of Sandpiper Court all the way down to the intersection with, um, with Roanoke Way. And then from there, there's also a section from uh, the intersection of Sandpiper Terrace and Roanoke Way that goes to the north. Uh, that's also highlighted in green that we could go ahead and bore there, as well as here on Blue Marlin Way, going from the intersection of Blue Marlin Way to Sandpiper Terrace back to the north, um, just shy of uh, Albacore. And then there's also a small section down here in the very north end of Blue Marlin Way that, again, we were able to identify existing blocks of vegetation that we could minimize disturbance by going ahead and changing up the installation method. So uh, we went to our board yesterday and received approval for a contract change order in order to uh, change up those installation methods in those areas identified in green here on the map. Um, a couple other things that I would like to highlight as well, um, since we've got the map up, we are also trying to, um, while we focus on water main replacement projects. We're also looking for opportunities to, to put in drainage as well as uh, roadway resurfacing. And the thought here is that when you do these improvements that you will not have to come back in and cut the roadway in order to make supplemental improvements let's say a year or two from now. So by going ahead and addressing these in, in more of a holistic approach, uh, we can uh, basically provide a project that when it's all said and done, um, has gone ahead and addressed multiple areas um, of our infrastructure. So I've got highlighted in blue here at key uh, roadway intersections, um, starting up here at the very north end with Old Cove Road and Cobia Way, as well as Finn Lane, going all the way down Sandpiper Terrace and Pamlico Way, uh, through Sandpiper Court, Blue Marlin Way, and down through the intersection of Roanoke Way, that culvert pipes would be installed here. So in the future, if there was a need for uh, drainage improvements, that infrastructure would all already be in place and we wouldn't have to proceed forward and, and cut the roadway, um, which is part of the project improvements is that we have water main replacement, we have uh, drainage uh, improvements with these cross tree culvert pipe installations, as well as roadway resurfacing. And the way we've structured it for this contract is that all the infrastructure would go in first and then under a separate contract, we would come behind and resurface all the roadways within the project area. So when all is said and done, basically we've got all brand new infrastructure all throughout the neighborhood. All right. So I'm going to uh, switch up and go back to the PowerPoint. Give me a second here. All right, did that come through? Yes, but you're not in a slideshow mode yet. There you go. Okay. All right. So we've covered the project overview. We've covered the schedule. Um, let's go ahead and talk about project sequencing. So uh, this is a tentative project sequence, and this is going to be subject to change. 
But ideally, what we would like to do is we would like to take care of the construction in those heavily uh, trafficked areas. So uh, first and foremost, um, we've, we would like to uh, take care of that corridor of West Old Cove Road and West Danube, continuing down to South Cobia Way, West Sandpiper Terrace, uh, through the Roanoke Way, and take care of that installation going all the way through the golf course. And I, I think uh, South Cobia Way and, and Sandpiper Terrace, along with West Old Cove, are some of the more heavily trafficked areas. So we would knock those out first. And then from there, we would then work from west to east, from Roanoke Way to Blue Marlin Way, through Albacore, South Pamlico Way, hit all those cul-de-sacs, uh, Tarpon Court, Amberjack, and Dolphin, and then work back to the east with Finn Lane and Pompano Court. So, um, just trying to come up with a sequence um, that we think um, addresses um, minimal disruption um, based upon the, the time of the year and um, where we have those off peak um, uh, tourist times that um, we could really attempt to minimize disruption throughout the neighborhood. All right, so the type of uh, equipment that you can expect um, will primarily consist of excavators, as you see here on the left-hand side. Um, it typically, you'll have about uh, a 30 to 36 inch wide trench in order to install the water main. Um, there will also be uh, mini excavators uh, for some of the smaller line sizes, as well as backhoes. Um, and you're going to see a lot of blue pipe uh, that's going to go in the ground. We are going to have a combination of eight inch diameter pipe, and that's going to be that loop connection uh, primarily along Old Cove Road, through Cobia Way, Sandpiper Terrace, through the golf course. Um, most everything else is going to be a six inch diameter, uh, with the exception of the cul-de-sacs. They're going to have the smaller diameter pipe, and that's going to be two inch. Uh, the two inch will be a little bit less disruptive uh, just because of that overall pipe size and the type of equipment that it takes in order to install that. So what you can expect uh, during the course of construction is that there, there is gonna be some, some limitations to pedestrian and, and um, vehicular traffic um, within the active project area. Uh, the contractor is required to provide um, some traffic control measures um, during the course of construction. So at this point, we don't have any planned uh, full road closures, but there may be single road closures um, during the time of active construction. So uh, traffic will or should be able to um, continue uh, while construction is taking place. And if there is a need uh, for a um, full road closure, uh, the town will go ahead and put out as much advanced notification as possible to the general public, um, just so you can be aware of when those restrictions uh, will be put in place. The um, Primarily what is being installed are water mains and storm pipes. So there's going to be a lot of trench excavation. So typically uh, the way that the uh, contractor has indicated his sequence is going to be, he thinks that um, they can knock out about 200 feet per day of uh, water main installation. And really what that equates to is about uh, three lots or three houses that they should be able to um, install on a daily basis during the course of construction and that's pending any weather or mechanical or, or other disruptions that may happen. So um, 
the, the way that uh, they will uh, sequence that, you know, for house is that they will go in, they will cut the driveways first. And when they are, when they have cut in the trench on either side of the driveway, they will take up that concrete that they have cut. They will install the water main, they will backfill, and then they will take uh, uh, gravel and backfill that top four inches um, with gravel. So there will be still a continuous surface so residents can get in and out of their driveways. So there should be minimal, if any, disruption to the residents to get in and out of their driveways, um, even during the active construction period. And there should be uh, continued traffic um, along the street section uh, during the course of construction. Uh, there may be times where a trench is left open at night, but that will be protected by, by barriers. Uh, we would expect that there would be orange safety fencing that would be put in place um, around the trench so as um, to protect any residents um, from uh, falling in uh, and, and just having those safety, safety measures in place um, while those trenches are open. Um, there, there will be construction equipment um, that will be staged um, within the right-of-way. Uh, most all the right-of-ways within the cove are 60 feet wide. Um, the, so if, if you look at the existing pavement width, which on average is about 20 foot, then you have, um, you have an additional 20 foot on, on either side um, with uh, which uh, the equipment could be located. And so uh, we have already spoken with the contractor to ensure that whenever they do have equipment there on site, uh, that they will stage that in such a way to minimize any um, impact um, to the uh, private property side. Um, as I had noted before, um, th there will be some disturbance to the driveways uh, in order to move forward with the uh, installation. And there will be some roadway cuts um, across uh, some of the street intersections. And uh, the way that that will be uh, conducted is uh, typically um, half the road will be cut um, so they can install the pipe on one side uh, to keep traffic flowing on the other side. And then once that is backfilled and completed, then they would move over to the other side again to permit uh, continued vehicle traffic uh, throughout the area. And then uh, there will be some vegetated areas that will be disturbed, uh, whether it be lawns or some vegetation um, that is currently located within the right of way. Uh, we have already discussed and uh, gone through the neighborhood on several different uh, occasions to see what we could do to minimize vegetated uh, disturbances. Um, I've got a, a couple examples um, just to, to give uh, a sense of um, what I'm talking about. Uh, what we have here is we've got a, a street uh, intersection and we've got some low lying vegetation right here. We've got a, the water main going in on this side. Um, all of this doesn't need to come out, but there is going to need to be a section, um, probably somewhere in the range of five to 10 feet um, for that open uh, cut installation to occur. Now the, the contractor can come back and uh, plant some replacement vegetation, but it's not gonna be at the same maturity level as the existing vegetation in some of these cases. Um, in this case right here, and this is along South Cobia Way, we've got two existing bushes out here, and we've got two or three feet between the edge of pavement and 
uh, the existing vegetation that's not adequate room uh, for um, the for the installation to occur. So these these um, these bushes would have to come out. Now that's not going to be the case um, for every situation. Here's a location along Fin Lane. Some of this vegetation can be trimmed back. Uh, in order for um, to provide adequate clearance for that install to occur. So um, I think there's there's going to be a combination of, of trimming um, as well as some uh, isolated removal uh, in order for the installation to occur. And uh, down here in the lower left hand corner, uh, this is going to be the temporary driveway surface. This is going to be the gravel that is infilled in those areas um, that are, are necessary to be cut across the driveway. And so there will be a um, continual surface um, during the course of construction. So uh, again, residents can get in and out uh, of their driveway. Okay. Um, just to cover uh, the the responsibilities, um, um, pre-construction and, and post-construction. Um, so if if homeowners do have uh, the following uh, within the right of way, uh, if you have existing landscaping that you that you want to save, or you have irrigation, or there is stone parking areas, um, that if if you want to save the landscaping. Um, I, I would I would say that from the edge of pavement, uh, about a, a distance ten foot offset from uh, the pavement, that that is going to be the general area that we will be working with it. So, if you've got existing landscaping that you want to save, that um, if, if you want to remove that prior to construction that um, you can do so and you can replant it uh, afterwards. Um, irrigation, if you have irrigation out there by the road, um, you, you've got uh, two options. You, you can try to take it up and relocate it yourself. Or if you want to identify it prior to uh, active construction taking place in your area, then the contractor said that he will try to work uh, as best he can with homeowners. Um, if it's identified, they can try to dig around it, pull it back, install the water line, backfill, and then replace the uh, irrigation to the best of their ability. So um, they said that they would be willing to work with homeowners uh, in order just to uh, move irrigation around so they can move forward with the install. And uh, same goes with any stone parking areas. It is, it is not the contractor's responsibility um, to uh, remove that and then replace that in kind, but uh, they will do the best that they can to skim that back out of the way, uh, excavate, backfill, and then try to replace back. Uh, but there, there is not the expectation that it's going to look exactly the same um, as compared to pre-construction conditions. Um, the, the contractor has volunteered to go ahead and just prior to moving forward with excavations in that active construction zone of going ahead and painting a line of where the proposed water line alignment is going to be. And so that way, homeowners, if they have obstructions um, within that corridor, uh, they can use that alignment to identify whether uh, they have an obstruction or not, that, um, that if they want to um, save that, that they can um, remove it in advance of that uh, construction taking place. What the contractor will be responsible for is removal and replacement of mailboxes. And, and so that is something that's in their contract as well as uh, replacing driveways, providing a temporary apron 
and then um, coming back and replacing that with a brand new apron. Um, and then lastly, the active construction area will uh, just be limited to the right of way. Uh, there isn't any uh, proposed um, construction um, on private property, um, nor should there be any equipment or material uh, placed on private property. Everything is proposed to occur within the right of way. So post-construction, um, what you can expect in those areas that have been disturbed, um, up here in the upper left-hand corner, um, all those disturbed areas will be restored uh, with hydro seed, which is a grass mulch mix, uh, which we've used um, on, on a lot of our uh, recent project work. And uh, typically, you know, within several months uh, that will be able to, to germinate and, and basically uh, restore a veg vegetated cover in that area. Uh, down in the lower right hand corner is, uh, is a depiction of a recent project work where we have uh, basically gone in and replaced the driveway apron. Um, initially with the bid, uh, the contractor was only proposing to replace about a 30 inch wide section. And um, we know that uh, that is the absolute minimum, but we also wanna recognize that, you know, this is gonna be pretty invasive to the neighborhood with the type of construction. And so we would, we wanna provide a nice end product uh, for our residents. And so we went back to our board and we asked if we could expand that driveway apron width from about 30 inches to about an average of 10 feet. So um, we, we did get approval for a change order for that. And, and so um, those properties uh, where the open cut installation will take place uh, essentially will get uh, a, a new driveway apron. Um, and if you have a, a different type of material, if you have an exposed aggregate or a stamped concrete, we would replace in kind. Uh, but I think uh, a significant amount of the driveways in there are, are concrete. So uh, on average, uh, that first 10 feet will, will be replaced. Um, if there's a joint that's 12 feet, that um, we will use our discretion in order to bring it up to the joint, um, again, to provide a nice end product um, for that driveway replacement. Um, I think uh, during the course of uh, the project, uh, communications are going to be key. And we've been uh, communicating already uh, with uh, representatives um, from the old Nags Head Cove Association. Uh, we've met with uh, Brenda Lowe. Uh, we've also uh, met with Dave Masters Jr who has volunteered to be a, a liaison uh, between the town as well as, um, as the, the residents uh, back in the cove. Um, I've, I've got my, myself, um, who's going to be the lead for the town of Nags Head. We've got our, our public services director, Eric Lawson, who's on the line, as well as uh, Nancy Carawan and Ray Schoomaker from our water department. Um, and there will also be other representatives from EnviroTech, uh, their project manager, which um, we, we still don't know who the on the ground supervisor is going to be at this time, uh, but um, we'll have um, that resource as well. Um, and, and so what we wanna do is keep the residents updated as to the construction progress, um, when they can expect to see active construction um, out along the front of their property. And so um, our plan is to uh, update our website uh, to have a, a dedicated uh, engineering page that would provide construction 
uh, project updates. So that's something that uh, we're, we're currently working on and, and we will provide that, um, that, that location once we get that set up. But we've got other means that we can go ahead and publish updates. Uh, we can do that through our social media accounts um, with Facebook and Instagram. Um, and also uh, Old Nexit Cove, uh, they have volunteered uh, their, their Facebook page um, uh, in order to go ahead and share some of those links and that, that updated information along the way um, in order just to keep people um, posted on the progress of construction. So there was a lot that was covered there. Um, and I just really tried to cover all the basics and a lot of that general information. Um, I, I know uh, to date, we've probably had uh, at least a dozen phone calls um, from affected residents as to how um, this project is going to be scheduled and sequenced and how they were gonna be impacted by it. So, um, at, at this time, um, I'd like to go ahead and, and open it up to questions. Um, we may need to, if, if it's more detailed, uh, we may need to have an offline conversation uh, individually with residents uh, to, to dive a little bit deeper as to how they may be impacted um, and try to get them the answers to their questions. So I, I uh, thank you everybody for your, for your patience. I know it was kind of long-winded, um, but it is a large project and we want to make sure that we give out as, as much information as possible. All right, uh, I see that, uh, Bob, you've got your, your hand raised. Yeah, Dave, what work hours and what work days are allowed in the contracts? Particularly, will they be working weekends? All right. So, um, very good question. Uh, Monday through Friday, uh, there there may be some allowances for Saturday work. Uh, typically, we would expect that maybe towards the 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 end of the project. You know, if they get in a time crunch, that uh, we we may permit that. And if we do, we would definitely share that with the residents. Um, and it's, I think what we have is, uh, seven to six, as far as the working hours, um, uh, usually that seven o'clock, seven to seven thirty would be mobilization time and seven thirty typically would be when active construction would commence. I'll ask another question. Um, what's going to happen with hydrants? Will old hydrants be removed? Are we getting new hydrants? Are the hydrants just getting shifted from one place to one side of the street to the other? Okay, so uh, with this, uh, we're getting all new hydrants, oh, cool. which are going on the new line. And per the, um, per the uh, construction plans that the old line uh, once a new line is in service, the old line is going to be abandoned uh, and those hydrants are going to be removed. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Does uh, anybody else have any questions? David, I, I will ask one more. You mentioned eight inch mains. Are mains being upsized or are we getting the same as existing main sizes? It's, um, yes, that, that's a very good question. So uh, per the plan, it's the, that main, and let me go ahead and see if I can bring up the, Let me bring up the map. Let's depict it better. Okay, can is that yeah. does the map come up? Okay. Yep. All right. So starting at one fifty eight, uh, this is going to be eight inch, going down to Cobia Way, 
and then this continue eight inch along Cobia Way, down Sandpiper Terrace, all the way down to Roanoke Way, and then out through the golf course. That is going to be a new eight inch diameter loop connection. Uh, these other lines that are branch lines, they are all going to be six inch, which is primarily what currently exists. But that increase in eight inch line with that loop connection um, should aid um, with the uh, hydraulics of that system, uh, as well as um, um, fire flow. I, I believe, which is is the intent for that upsizing. Thank you. All right. Is um, like I said, I, I I know I I covered a lot, and and it was uh, somewhat long winded. But uh, do we have any other questions? All right, uh, hearing none, um, in, the, in the letters that we sent out, uh, I've got my contact information on there, uh, phone number, as well as email. So should something else come up um, that uh, a question that you may have, uh, please feel free to go ahead and, and contact me. Um, if, if I don't have uh, the question, the, the answer for you, then I can reach out to our uh, engineers. Uh, we've got a whole host of, of, um, of resources that we have for this project. And um, uh, like I said, uh, we, we look forward towards a successful project um, and we plan on, on keeping the residents apprised and trying to communicate during the course of this project um, to come up with um, the, uh, the, the uh, best project here in the end, um, you know, for the uh, residents in the Cove, so. Um, David, can, can I ask one more question? Sure. Repaving, when can we expect, when can we anticipate that happening? And will that, will there be a similar amount of notice and uh, opportunity for questions about the repaving? So the, the, the paving is really conditioned on a completion of the, of the uh, water main. So if the, if the, if the water main is completed, um, let's say if it's completed in the, in the fall, then we would want to go ahead and pave as soon as it's completed or as soon as they've met substantial completion. So it would, it would follow up right after the completion of the water main. Um, in, in the spring, um, it depends on if, if they're able to finish up in the May timeframe, then we would, we would look to have that um, resurfacing already bid out and ready to go in the June timeframe. But um, it's, like I said, it's, it's kind of a, a moving target right now. We've got everything in place. Uh, as far as the, the, the paving background information, it's just going ahead and getting a better sense on when the water main is going to be complete uh, for us to go ahead and finalize that and move forward with that contract. So, uh, Can we uh, expect similar notice or should is that just going to be through the communications platform? It will be through the communications platform. Um, it, it, you're probably not going to read receive as much advanced notice as, as this, but we'll, we'll try to give the residents a, as much uh, notification as possible. Hey Dave, uh, this is Wayne. Uh, will the PowerPoint and the recording of this uh, session be, be somewhere where, where it can be looked at later on? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, I, I did go ahead and record this, and uh, I, we can go ahead and make that available on our on our web page. Um, and I, unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly where that's going to be located, uh, but 
Wayne, I've got your uh, email address and I can pass it along to you and I can send it along to uh, Brenda Lowe as well. And uh, she can um, hopefully uh, pass that along to um, the other residents back there in the neighborhood. Okay, thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Anybody else? All right, well, uh, I thank everybody for their time. Um, like I said, any questions that come up, please do not hesitate to uh, contact me. Um, and during the course of construction, uh, please feel free to reach out. If, there's, if you have any comments or concerns, uh, we will do what we can on our side to address those as quickly as possible. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, we really thank you for, um, thank you in advance uh, for, for your patience on this project. So um, thanks again for joining us this evening.